asked the question whether this, um, these biomaterials that can guide nerves across a spinal cord injury, if they will ever be used in the clinic and actually help patients again to walk again. So if you ask ever, I'm of course optimistic because ever we still have a lot of time, but it will take a long time. And it will require a very combinatorial uh, approach, not only using a biomaterial bridge to guide nerves across an injury site, but also bioactive factors to stimulate the nerves to grow, to get rid of the scar tissue, which is automatically produced by the body. Uh, but also in combination with rehabilitation and electrical stimulation. And I would like to um, mention great progress that is coming out of Switzerland, where um, the groups of Grégoire Courtine and Jocelyne Bloch, they are now electrically stimulating the nurse below the injury site. And uh, this actually allows patients that are paralyzed to stand up again and to even walk again. But the device, of course, needs to be on. But so in best case scenarios, the, 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 the people can stand for two hours. They can walk up to like a kilometer. Um, but of course, this is not, this is an artificial bridge and it's not really regenerating the nerves to replace the spinal cord again. However, I have, we have to say that in the recent studies coming out of these groups that they saw, that this movement of these people was actually starting to stimulate some real nerve regeneration. And so I'm really convinced that if we will combine these technologies with these biomaterial bridges, that we can um, stimulate these regenerating nerves to really form a, more, a natural bridge again, to, to cross the injury between the brain and the rest of the body. Um, and that this could be successful in the future, but we will need another 10 years, I think, before um, this would potentially be used in the clinic. I mean, being an engineer from training, um, the RETH is, of course, very attractive as it's a technical university. But these type of materials are very interdisciplinary research, as you mentioned. And so it's, of course, very good to have a very strong chemistry and biology department here in Aachen. Um, and in addition, we have the university hospital very close by. So we have very close connection to the medical doctors that can tell us about the challenges and the needs in the clinic where we can learn. And this is really the aim of our research that we can then come up with creative solutions and smart materials in order to, to develop new therapies, but also to, to have platform and systems to answer biological questions we couldn't answer before or have like mini tissues in high throughput so we can use them for drug testing, which is very interesting for the pharmaceutical and cosmetic industry, for example. So I really believe that having all these uh, players together here in Aachen, we could, we could make a big difference there. So the FIT is first in translation. It's a building which is funded by um, the NRV also. And um, it has 400 square meter clean rooms, but also normal labs, um, chemistry and biology labs. And so what's very special there is that it's filling a very important gap, a gap from researchers that are working at the lab bench into the clinic and to really help patients uh, on the bedside. Having these labs here and uh, be able to, to, to produce these materials that we develop in a, in a good manufacturing practice method and also test them according to GLP, we will be able to close this gap because we will be able to show the industry and investors that we can make these materials and translate them actually and produce them according to the needs of, of bringing them into the market. And then hopefully this will help us to find more investors than um, to be at a later point of development and find the investors to then go into clinical trials together with the medical doctors from the Uniclinic. So the, the FIT is a building which is really a joint building between the DWI and the University Hospital RWTH. So the doctors are pulling and we are pushing. And so hopefully, um, yeah, we can really make a difference there. So it's very unique to have this here in Aachen. Wir haben einige Role Models bereits an der RWTH. Frau Delaporte ist eine von denjenigen, die wir ähm, einen letzten Freitag vorgestellt haben im Rahmen des Faculty Clubs und äh, die ganz wunderbar, ähm, ich sag mal so, dafür herhalten, ähm, eines unserer wichtigen Vorbilder zu sein. Wir brauchen diese Vorbilder für junge Frauen, äh, besonders in den, den akademischen Bereichen, die äh, aus den MINT-Fächern kommen, ähm, weil wir an der Stelle ähm, 
noch unglaublich viel Nachholbedarf haben. An der RWTH haben wir wirklich richtig viele Programme, die junge Karrieren fördern. Ähm, dazu gehören die Tandem-Programme, die äh, in verschiedenen äh, Stufen der wissenschaftlichen Karriere Frauen, junge Akademikerinnen fördern. Und äh, wir wollen versuchen, so ähm, eine größere Chancengerechtigkeit und eine größere Diversität zu erreichen. Das sind, so, ich sag mal, im Moment noch kleine Tropfen auf den heißen Stein. Und deshalb äh, ist es wichtig, dass wir von allen Seiten an der Stelle anfangen. Also nur Nachwuchsförderung, ja, aber die Nachwuchskarrieren brauchen Vorbilder. Das ist extrem wichtig, damit äh, Frauen eine Idee davon bekommen, wie ihre Karrieren, wie ihre Lebenswege an den Stellen aussehen können. Musik